Welcome to a new episode of Triptease. I am Leah Vincent. Today we're going to talk about Disney, not just any Disney, Disney World in Orlando. I am an annual pass holder and I was there recently to experience a brand new restaurant that everyone was really excited about. I was there for the ribbon cutting. And then I'm also going to tell you a little bit about how you can do Disney now. It's changed a lot since COVID when it was closed for a little bit. And then they also added a bunch of new things for 2024. And we are going to talk about it today. One thing I think is really interesting about these parks is they had such an influx of guests um, in 2020. Disney opened in July of 2020, you know, after being closed, like, you know, with COVID, that was, you know, such a historic thing for Disney to be closed for months. And then they reopened, they had all sorts of new rules and everything like that, but they were closed for so long. And then people really had that demand to come back and people were scared to leave the country because of all the COVID testing, you know, that started in January of 2021. So they were like, let's do domestic, let's do domestic. So Disney had unprecedented numbers coming to the parks in 21 and 22. And now in 23 and 24, they've had a big decline of guests. And I've got some thoughts on that, on why, you know, not just because of the boom, but also because of all their new things that they have going on. So I was going to talk about that. And I would love to hear comments of what people think about that. Um, one big thing that's new at Disney, um, new-ish, is the Genie Plus. And I think that that Genie Plus is a little bit overwhelming to some people um, because you can't really plan as much in advance. So let me kind of give you like kind of the cliff notes on Genie Plus. It's what a lot of people that have been going to Disney for a long time would call a fast pass. And I'm like, you know, annoying people that are with me because I'm still referring it to a fast pass. I'm like, do we have a fast pass? And they're like, Leah, it's called Genie Plus. I'm like, whatever. So if you have Genie Plus, that what they do is they sell a Genie Plus pass for the day. And if you know exactly what park you're going to go to and you're going to like Animal Kingdom, in my opinion, you don't even need Genie Plus because there's not very many rides that even ha have a wait. But some people, I mean, sometimes I'm like, well, let's spend more money. Let's do Genie Plus. But it was like $17 to get Genie Plus for Animal Kingdom. But if you're going to park hop, you're going to go ahead and want to upgrade, especially if you're doing Magic Kingdom. So if you're going to park hop, um, this last week was $27 and you're going to get Animal Kingdom and Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom is always going to be the most expensive. They have the most rides. So this is going to give you access to reserving the lightning lane. So there's all this new lingo, which I think is really overwhelming for the general public. I mean, with a plug here now for my travel agency, we have agents that specialize in Disney destinations. So Disney World, Disneyland, Olani, Disney Cruise Line, all of those Disney people speak in like their own language. I feel like it is like you need a hooked on phonics like class to talk to Disney people. So and I and I say that in the most endearing way possible because I am an annual pass holder and I just still sometimes get a little overwhelmed by their um, lingo that they use. But so, OK, so Genie Plus, you're going to buy a day pass. And the day pass is going to give you access to the lightning lanes. And there's only specific rides that you can do that. You buy the Genie Plus that morning. And then you can also buy specific ride specific lightning lanes. So, for example, you're at Animal Kingdom and you want to ride Flight of Passage. You can buy a specific lightning lane where you set an exact time. So you would say, I'm going to go from one to two o'clock. I have this window of time for like $14 and I can ride Flight of Passage. And the same goes for a lot of the bigger rides like for example mine train at magic kingdom that one is the snow white ride that's really popular and you can buy a specific lightning lane and then there's a whole other level of lightning lane that you can do for example guardians of the galaxy you cannot just go stand in line at guardians of the galaxy did you know that i mean i think when i was standing there trying to check in for guardians of the galaxy there's a lot of people coming up and being like where do we get in line and they don't understand that it's a virtual queue and you have to enter the virtual queue at 7 a.m. or 1 p.m. At 7 a.m., you just have to have, you know, a ticket for the park that day. But at 1 p.m., you do have to be inside the park in order to try to enter the virtual queue. And you will kind of watch it on the app. The app will be telling you, you are now 45th in line. And that estimated time to come back is 1030 in the morning. Oh, you know, the ride went down, which that's common with Guardians of the Galaxy. Now you're pushed out to 1130. 
So you have to really kind of monitor it. And like, honestly, your phone just starts to die. So side note, they have these battery chargers and you buy it once and then you can go back and um, just exchange. So that's really awesome for, you know, because so much of the park you have to do on um, your phone with the app. So if you're not app savvy, travel with someone that is because, I mean, honestly, that's like really the only option. So I, I feel like this was this has been such a sticking point for a lot of people that are like wanting to stay away from Disney. But I mean, I think we at this point, it's been a year and a half or more. We just need to embrace Genie Plus. I know they have some changes coming down the line, but we really just need to make a plug for travel agents. That That's one of the really cool things about our team is we don't have any additional charges to help you with your Disney trip. And some of these agents, they are going to tell you where to stand for the fireworks, what's the best food, how the best way is to, you know, maximize your day, like which rides you should start with, like rope drop, which is something I feel like I didn't hear about people calling something rope drop until, you know, in fairly recent years. But it's getting there like before the park opens so that you're at the front of the line. So you're able to run to one of the most popular rides so that maybe you don't have to buy a lightning lane for that ride. Another thing that's new for 2024, and we had this in 2019, and they canceled it for COVID, is the Disney dining plan. And I know that has been also a sticking point, and that was something that we didn't have in 23, and people are like, I wanna wait and go back for the dining plan. They came back with a dining plan for 24, and you know everyone rejoices <laughs> with the dining plan. They didn't want to have the dining plan at Disney until all the restaurants are open. And um, just because they wouldn't be able to service them, like if you if you bought a dining plan and you like, I can't get into any of the restaurants that I want to get into. And I bought this dining plan. I could see that being frustrating. So I think it was a smart move on Disney. And I think people are really embracing the dining plan right now. They have two different kinds of dining plan. There's the quick service and a quick service. You're going to get two quick service meals. So a quick service meal is where you're going to walk up to a counter with a plastic tray and you're going to order like a burger or a wrap or you know, pizza or something like that. It's something that you're going to be able to um, walk up and you're not going to have a waiter um, or waitress. And then um, you also get a snack and that is like, they'll have a set dollar amount that you can use for your snack credit. And when you're um, at the park, a lot of times the signs, they'll have a little emblem. And then that, you know, that that means that that particular food item is applicable for the snack, um, you know, redemption. And then you also get a refillable mug. So it's this plastic mug, it has a little sensor, so it knows like when you bought it, it's, you know, all this, you know, IT tech stuff. And you can refill it at your hotel, at your Disney hotel. So the only thing that I think is kind of a bummer is that you can't take it with you to the park and then refill it in the park. It is just for the hotel. But I mean, for me, I'm a Diet Coke drinker, so I appreciate the unlimited Diet Cokes in the morning since I'm not a coffee drinker. You can also put coffee in it, I would think. So um, there are like the the thermosy looking cups, um, and then you can take them home. It's something that you get to keep. So that's quick service. And then the full dining plan, you're getting a quick service meal, you know, kind of more geared towards lunch, a table service meal. So this is where you sit down and you order off a menu, or you can exchange that for a character dining. And a lot of times those are buffets, a snack and a refillable mug. And I would say the most common question when people are planning this and they're like Disney dining plan, Disney dining plan, they say, is it worth it? Well, think about what kind of traveler that you are, because if you're the kind of traveler like, oh, my gosh, when I was little, I was so mortified. We're checking into this like really nice resort in Huntington Beach, California, and my mom's looking for her credit card. Sorry, mom, if you're listening. And like she pulls out her waffle iron and sticks it on the counter. <laughs> she keeps looking for her credit card. I mean... I get it now that I have kids because, you know, when you're going to an expensive breakfast in the morning, I mean, okay, look, we just dropped $300 on breakfast and the kids ate yogurt and three pieces of bacon. But if you're that type of traveler, you you probably are not going to find a huge value in the dining plan. But if you're the type of traveler that you're going to go out to eat for every meal, then, and you actually use all the credits, um, like the snack credits, especially I've seen in the past, they used to offer more snack credits. Now it's one per day, but people were like buying that. Like you could tell it was the last day of their trip because they would be in one of the shops and you could see they're buying all the food that snack credits that, that come in a package so they can just take them home. It's pretty entertaining seeing them be like, oh, look, I've got 12 snack credits left for my week at Disney. So let's go ahead and get like 12, you know, packaged 
things of cookies or whatever. And you also have to pay attention when with your snack credits, like for example, a banana is a snack credit, but what is a banana? $2. So are you going to use your $2 banana for a snack credit or are you going to find something like a, a pretzel or something that's going to maybe sustain you a little bit longer that's really like $7 or $8? If you maximize, it's a good deal. But I, I will say that most people are not getting the dining plan because they're necessarily saving money. They like the idea of prepaying for their trip. They've got everything included. And now we can kind of like more like money manage and like now we're just buying like souvenirs and maybe little extra things but not we don't know how much we're going to spend it kind of puts you in that kind of all-inclusive type of vacation experience similar to a cruise or going to an all-inclusive resort so yay disney dining plan you're back you can add it to your package and with disney packages one thing that's really cool is you can book the hotel the tickets and the dining plan all in one package and you just put 200 dollars down so plug for that. That is, that makes it a little bit easier on families. Another thing I really wanted to talk about is what new things are coming to Disney for 2024 that, you know, haven't already happened. So dining plan is already out. Genie plus and all of that stuff is already rolling, but coming soon is Tiana's Bayou adventure. So they have not announced the exact date, but it's coming summer 2025. And I think they just don't want necessarily you know, what if it gets pushed by a couple of days and somebody, you know, plan their whole trip about being there the opening day of Tiana's Bayou Adventure. So what is Tiana's Bayou Adventure? It's Splash Mountain. So Splash Mountain got a, had a little bit of controversy. And I mean, honestly, I didn't read um, too much uh, into it, but there was a lot of history and some of it was offensive. So they decided to change it. And now it is going to be a whole princess and the frog theme, which is Tiana's Bayou Adventure. They've also made it where they have a restaurant over there and they're going to have all this kind of like New Orleans food and stuff like that. It looks it looks like it's going to be really, really cool. And honestly, Splash Mountain, I know is a little bit honestly, it's just more like the nostalgia of like, oh, I remember Splash Mountain when I was a little kid, but it was old and little kids did no idea who these bears and bunnies were. So I think the refresh was a really good idea on on Disney's part. And fun fact, so this, uh, January of 2023 is when they um, pulled Splash Mountain and I went for the last day. We stood in line for forever. It was wrapped and wrapped and wrapped and wrapped. I mean, all of the all the Disney bloggers were there and everything for the final day of Splash Mountain. It, it was like something out of a movie. It was crazy. And then you after you got done with the ride, of course, then there's always the gift shop. You know, after every ride, there's always a the gift shop. And that place was cleared out. People, I'm, I'm assuming, are planning to sell all the Splash Mountain stuff on eBay or whatever. They definitely cleaned house on Splash Mountain. So if you have a Splash Mountain toy from the ride, keep it. Maybe it'll be worth money someday. Um, another cool thing that's coming out for July. So I'm, I'm just going to assume, let's say, Tiana's is around July. But the Wilderness Cabins. I actually stayed at the old Wilderness Cabins. October of 23 and they have completely taken those out and they're going to be like brand new little wilderness cabins. So this is like, if you're staying at wilderness lodge, this is a whole different, it's like Fort wilderness. So they're, they're like almost like your, I feel like, so I'm in Oklahoma. They look like these little cabins that you would get like at grand Lake or something like that, where they have the little log cabin feel and they have the fire pits and all of that kind of stuff. It's really neat. And they have RV hookups there. So when I stay there in October, the people with the RV hookups are like a whole different breed of Disney guests and they decorate for Halloween. And I guess they do it at Christmas too. It was next level. It's like they probably plan this all year about all of their extreme decorations. So I really hope they do that with the new ones too. And I think the RV ones are like the next level, but then the cabins, they also did it. I'm really glad that they're changing them. I did see, I don't know if this is true. So somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I did see that they are um, selling the old cabins and you have to live in Orlando within a certain radius. And I don't, otherwise I think that would have been super fun. But one thing I didn't like about the cap, the old cabins was the main bed in the, in the bedroom was pushed up against the wall. So you had bunk beds, a bed pushed up against the wall and then a sleeper sofa. These cabins, um, they've redesigned them. So the bed is not pushed up against the wall like that. 
They still have the bunk beds and they still sleep six. So that's really nice. A lot of times families of five and six have a harder time finding accommodations. Disney definitely can cater to larger families more than others. You know, most of the like deluxe resorts and stuff, they have a lot of rooms that sleep five because they have the two queen beds and then the sleeper sofa kind of like it's almost like a twin that kind of folds down where it's a sofa, but then it's a full size mattress, just like on Disney Cruise Line. But six, that's like that's a whole nother ballgame. Usually you have to get two rooms. So the cabins work really well. They are going to be entering them into the DVC, like the Disney Vacation Club, which is timeshare. So people can have that as their home base, but then they'll still be um, you know, renting them out for vacations. And another thing that is exciting, and I was there, I was one of the very first people that ate at the new, new, and I'm saying that in quotes, 1900 Park Fair. So this is a restaurant that has been at Grand Floridian for a long time, and they closed at COVID, and they opened on Wednesday. So we were really excited. We actually stood there as they opened the doors. It was like Disney blog. And, you know, Disney nerds like me standing there while they open the doors and there's Tiana and the crew, the chef, they've got a ribbon, they cut the ribbon. I mean, it was a whole thing. So exciting about 1900 Park Fair. This is located inside the Grand Floridian. It's one of the character dining experiences and it's a buffet. It's open for breakfast and dinner. You know, I like doing stuff like this, and I will say that I'm not a good judge for it's too expensive because I just feel like I'm a a spender. But like if you're not a spender, you might be like, that's a lot of money for eggs and bacon. But it's also part of the whole experience. So let me give a plug for the whole experience because there's four characters that you get to meet. Aladdin, and he's in his like formal outfit. He's so cute. And Cinderella, and she's in her blue. Tiana, and she's got a new outfit that I have never seen before. And then Mirabelle, too. So you get to meet kind of four unique um, characters and they come to each table, have a conversation with you or your kids. You get to take pictures and then you also get the buffet. I think getting to meet the characters is such a neat experience for kids where you get to do it in that kind of environment because it's not as overwhelming. So like you can meet the characters that, you know, inside the park at Magic Kingdom. They'll be like, you know, the princess area that you get to go stand in line. So, okay. So after your kids stood in line for two hours to meet Cinderella, she's, they're probably not in the best of, you know, spirits, but if they're sitting there eating, you know, a great breakfast and she just comes to your table, that's totally different. (laughs) So I think that that has been something that with my kids doing the character dining experiences just kind of checks that off from having to experience that in the park. And then we get to just do other things because of course everyone wants to meet them and take their picture. You can also do that over at Chef Mickey's if you want to meet um, like the more traditional Mickey Mouse and Goofy characters. Um, But doing those and using your dining plan (laughs) is a great option to be able to meet the characters and breakfast or dinner. And it's one thing that is um, a little bit of a bummer as an annual pass holder. And that is something that's a really neat perk with annual passes that you get a discount on the table service meals. This one, they have canceled the discounts, canceled the discounts. I guess I, that's the best way to say it for the first year um, of 1900 Park Fair being open. So don't go with your hopes and dreams of 20% off. But the food was really good. I will say that the food was really good. They had actually really good biscuits and gravy. The biscuits were so soft and, the, and it was like a sausage gravy. I really judge places by the biscuits being good because... When I was on a Disney cruise, their biscuits were like like hockey pucks. And I was like, no, no, no. You cook these too long. And if you're going to be catering to people in the South, we need some soft biscuits. And they also had Tiana's bread pudding, which is, I guess, one of the big things to have. And it had this really amazing cream sauce that you poured over the top of the bread pudding. They had a carving station. They had the strawberry soup. That was kind of like a, a thing to get at 1900 Park Fair. And then our waitress gave us a little tip. She said, I know all this food is all really good, but the best thing is the croissant pizza and it's over on the children's buffet. So don't discount it because it's on the children's buffet. You have to go have the croissant pizza. And she was right now. I really want to go buy like a big box of croissants at Costco and try to make croissant breakfast pizza because, oh my gosh, it was so good. Um, one thing people were excited about. So now at 1900 Park Fair, they have all these neat paintings and it's this like Victorian style um, restaurant still. 
is what was going to happen with Big Bertha. And so Big Bertha is a turn of the century organ that was donated from France. Maybe I don't know if it was donated. I just assume France donates everything, I think. So that's from France. It's been at the Grand Floridian since 1988 and it is still there. So they've updated a lot of the restaurant inside, you know, in the last four years of it being closed. Um, but Big Bertha is still there, so no worries on that. And But the restaurant is beautiful, so I hope you go and check it out. Do make reservations. It's the kind of one where you need to be on the app making the reservation at 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning when your window opens. And that's something when your um, travel advisor can help you with um, telling you you know, when you can start checking in for your dining and everything. But 1900 Park Fair, I think is very worth it. It's just fun to be there when something's new and fresh and exciting and something other people haven't done recently. And I definitely recommend it. I was there for breakfast, but the dinner also looked really amazing. They have a lot of like the Tiana's like New Orleans style, you know, entrees and stuff on the buffet. Uh, so something a little bit different. And it's such an easy spot. So if you're over at Magic Kingdom or over at Epcot, you can take the monorail to the Grand Floridian to eat breakfast or dinner. I hope I inspired you to go to Disney in 2024. There are so many new things that are happening and the crowds are lower than ever. And I, as an annual pass holder, I am a huge fan, but you don't have to be a huge fan to go to Disney. There are so many different aspects to Disney. And, and when you're ready to plan, I hope you'll use Vincent Vacations. You can reach out to us on any of our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok. It's Vincent Vacations, or even send us an email, info at vincentvacations.com. And one of our agents that specialize in Disney destinations would love to help you plan your family's vacation.